Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Ev and today we're going to be talking about how I structure my thought lab or otherwise known as Zettelkasten in Rome research. So my thought lab is a place where I keep all of my Zettelkasten notes. So permanent notes, anything that's coming in from stuff that I consume that I need to kind of put somewhere and house in a space. That is my thought lab. And I think I do some pretty interesting things that you might like. So I thought that in this video, I'd go through it with you. Uh, you can see the page, you can see some of the templates that I set up and it might inspire you in your own room research graph. So let's have a look at how I set it up. Okay, so firstly, my thought lab is the only place in my room research graph where I actually put things on a page. Every other note that I create is created on a daily page and then referenced. So um, yeah, this is the actual only page where I uh, where I actually put um, things into the page. So there's two types of notes that I use. Uh, one is called a cluster note and the other is called an atomic note. And these are basically my permanent notes, okay? So um, I just changed the name just because, you know, you can and it's my system and I wanna make things kind of my own. So uh, a cluster note for me is kind of a top level note. And as I scroll through, you'll kind of see, um, I try and use a declarative statement, like something about the idea that I believe. Um, so uh, there's some here, like make the solution appear simple, the power of the daily, uh, a question like, are we entering a new Renaissance era? Um, change your daily habits, change your life. So I try and kind of make a declarative statement and that becomes like a cluster of notes. And then in any one of these, let's see, you know, this has a couple, you'll see there is atomic notes. And uh, and so each atomic note is like, um, in, in the Zettelkasten method, it's kind of, um, it's like a sequence note. So when you, uh, when you are processing your notes, you'll have a permanent note that you write, and then you find a place within the slip box to kind of put that sequence note. And that's, that's how I kind of picture it in my head. So rather than just taking permanent notes and filing them and saying, well, that's about, um, like habits or that's about self-improvement, we're actually uh, connecting it into the knowledge that we have. And so hopefully the knowledge can kind of grow as, um, as our notes grow. And I find that helps me to build a really rich uh, kind of note system rather than just like take a note, file it away, and then kind of, I used to forget about it. That's that's kind of how I used to do note taking. And now with this method, it's like, okay, I have to connect that into that. And that kind of fits in between these two. And and so it's all a process of, of writing the note and then finding a place for it. So um, let's have a look at how I actually, because uh, there's two types of templates that I use. So let's have a look at those and um, and how this kind of plays out. So the cluster notes are really simple. Okay, so, and I use um, the smart blocks from Rome 42 to do this. Uh, I bring that up just by saying new cluster note. And it's really simple. So over here you can see the cluster note, right? Um, and it's basically, if I click in here, it's just a tag, cluster note. So that's kind of like, um, I can search for that tag across uh, my whole graph. Then I have, um, a place where I can actually put the page name into. So that also has this symbol. And I just find when I, it makes it easier when I'm searching the graph, uh, if I can see what is a cluster note. Um, and so I just put that little symbol in that is courtesy of Maggie Appleton, I think. And then I just put date created and that auto populates. Um, it's as a part of the smart blocks templates. Really for me, it's a nice to have. Um, and I do like to kind of see, okay, when did I first create this note? When was the last note? That kind of thing. I, I like to kind of see the, the trail of breadcrumbs. So that, and that's it. And that's what it looks like when it first is, uh, when I first kind of put the template in. And all I do is I just click inside here and I'll add a, a name for this note. So and that's it. And so then obviously under that you need to add more notes. So usually in the first cluster note, I'll have an idea about what 
the note is going to be about okay so I'll, I'll write a few lines here blah 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 and then what happens is um, I will then want to kind of connect in uh, there'll, there'll be an atomic note that I need to connect in and so atomic notes for me are they're where I really house all of the notes okay so these cluster ones are really like a group of ideas that come together to kind of form a statement um, like this one our computers making us numb there's like five notes in here um, this one here computers use so little of our bodies I think that was from Dave Perel um, and uh, and so the actual note is here uh, but it makes up kind of this cluster note I would say uh, so how I do that is I just do the same and I just choose atomic note and what's happening here there is some cool stuff that if you have uh, Rome uh, 42 smart block uh, if you've installed that then uh, you can make this cool stuff happen so you'll see like as I scroll through here you'll see there's these numbers okay and that's how many references um, back to this cluster note there is and the way that I do that this is kind of the biggest one is if I open this up you'll see these are all the atomic notes in here and each atomic note has this little uh, star and that means that I've created an alias back here okay so let's let's just have a look at what that means so basically this block here relates back to this cluster note so and all I've done is just put a, a star in front of it and that adds it as an alias um, and I'll show you exactly how to do that so basically what I can do is when I'm scrolling through my cluster notes I can actually see how many notes are inside like this one here there's only one one atomic note um, and so it's a really uh, I find it a really great way to kind of see which of the notes I can um, uh, which of the notes kind of are bigger and which are smaller um, and kind of what yeah like what's interesting to me and and that kind of thing so I'll show you how I actually do that okay this is what I was doing previously I would copy the block reference I would add the block reference in then I would come here and I would say replace either with text or replace with text the, so replace with text and alias you can do that and that actually adds it as an alias okay so that is that was the whole process before and to be honest that is annoying to do all of the time okay so I had this idea so in uh, with uh, 42 smart blocks you can have these buttons okay and so if you have a look over here right um, this is only gonna make sense if we have a look in the actual template so what happens is it's actually so simple so um, I created this uh, template that basically puts the um, this asterisk part and then it's got the uh, the brackets and then inside it will paste in the clipboard text so then that's step one so you have to create the actual template step two I added the button okay so um, this is a button uh, and it's part of the um, if you have 42 smart blocks installed so that's the name of the button and then you just say what the smart block is so smart block is the reference block which comes from here okay so what that does is now when I want to say well this is um, part of this cluster note I just come here and I still do copy block ref but then I just click the button and so what happens is uh, I've got the reference here that's a name for the cluster note and then this has come up so let me show you that again okay so there's no number here okay and I just go copy so that copies the clipboard text and remember this 42 smart block pastes that in automatically and that's that's just how it works um, this is honestly the most magical thing I've ever done um, <laughs> with my Rome research and uh, and I love it so much and so all I then have to do is I just put a name for this note so this is the name for my atomic note it's got the reference and then I just started writing the note so as I'm kind of going through my writing inbox I will and this is kind of uh, 
I, I want to do another video on my writing inbox, but basically I have all of my literature notes, which I call spark notes. So if I wanted to, let's say I needed to, I wanted to process this and it's going to be part of this note. All I do is I just alt and drag this into the meta. And so then I will write my notes. And then once it's done, I then uh, click it as done. It goes out of my writing inbox because I've processed it. And so it just uh, gives me context when I'm looking at this note to know, oh yeah, that came from that particular book or that particular note that I wrote or that thing that I watched, that kind of thing. So it just allows me to kind of work my way back to where it actually came from. And that's it. That's how I process uh, all of my permanent notes into what I call the thought lab. And it's where I keep all my permanent notes. It is fantastic. I, I really love processing notes in Rome um, and kind of finding a place for them. That's one of my favorite things. It's like, okay, you take something from the writing inbox and you kind of look for a place um, to insert it and connect it into what you already know and it really becomes a part of you. And so guys, thank you for watching. I hope this was really helpful and that you've walked away with some cool ideas um, for your own Rome Research Graph. If you liked this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and please leave a comment. I always love reading your comments. And um, if you want to uh, continue the conversation or you have a question or anything like that, reach out to me on Twitter. My DMs are always open and I love to have conversations about this kind of stuff. See you guys.